What is up fishing addicts on today's video we'll be discussing the difference between lead and tungsten on a Texas rig. What are the benefits? What are the draws if there are any? Well I've been uh, trying Texas rig for this year since well I've been using Texas rig for some time now but uh, I stopped using it last year because of my line snapping when I'm using it on the river and what I found out was because uh, lead is a softer metal and I don't know if you guys can see right in there the inlet when you tap rocks and it closes and when you're using fluorocarbon it snaps the line so what I switched to is tungsten tungsten is much denser and much better this is a 3 8 uh, tungsten and I'm loving it. Uh, it does have, like I said, I don't. The only drawback of tungsten over lead is the price tag. Uh, I have found a website where I can get them for dollar thirty-seven each. Instead, uh, if you go on Bass Pro Shop or any store, you get two for eight dollars. So, uh, like I said, uh, the drawback for lead is softer and it's uh, it's not as dense as. Uh, uh, tungsten so you get a bigger weight uh, however for this rod since I do not use this reel on uh, tournaments I will rig it up with lead but uh, and the reason I'm rigging up with lead is because uh, I have issues with this uh, reel and it, to a point that I, I can't even use it anymore but uh, however uh, most of the time when I'm fishing I do use uh, uh, tungsten and uh, I have some lead that's why I'm gonna use it this time but uh, how I rig it up well, just grab the line what I do is I always pick my weights so when I'm uh, fishing grassy areas the bait doesn't get stuck so what I do is I'll use a bobber stopper go through the line my bubble stopper once I do that and uh, if you don't want to use a tungsten when you have a lid that, that is closed all you gotta do is just grab a hook and it's the choker just get a hook and uh, pop through it and uh, it would easily easily open up the inlet and that's why I kind of not use uh, lead when I'm tournament fishing but I got a, a 24 pound braid over here I'm just gonna run the weight and then I put a glass bead voila um, usually what I found out online is a lot of people would like to use glass bead to protect the knot um, what I found I was using a glass bead last year and I thought that was causing my uh, line to break but uh, I just found out it just breaks from the end because uh, the lead cuts through the line. And I tie a advanced, I guess it's advanced polymer knot. Otherwise I'll go through the, I'm using a, I think this is a size one. I'm going to be using this for small mouth. This is an extra, extra, extra small hook. Or my uh, regular Texas hook. This will be a three art. Um, this is the owner. This is a Gamakatsu. The reason I'll be using a smaller hook and a lot tin wire is because uh, tin wire hooks will pierce through a small mouth or or fish's mouth a lot easier than a heavy gauge wire. 
and since I'm going for small mount, they got uh, tiny little mounts. This will do great. Like I said, this is a test run, but uh, this is how I usually rig them up. So I'll go to the eyelet. Usually, I do is uh, five turns, but uh, with uh, monotech spray, I like to do seven or eight. Uh, monotex it's from Ardent makes it, and uh, doesn't have the best uh, best knot strength from like braid or uh, floral. Pull it through. Go to the hook, pull it, and start tightening. I have to wet it a little bit because uh, Montex has the property of a uh, mono, and then now. Uh, I'll cut the axis. Voila! I just bring my bobber stopper. Perfect. And then I'm using a Christie Crow just for uh, demonstrations, demonstration purposes. But I'll be using uh, actually I'll I'll, I'll be using a crystal crowd for tomorrow's video we'll be fishing the river so just go through it just go through the head what i do is i'll go through the head all the way to the bend and then pull the hook out once it's over there bring it through once i bring it and uh, what I do is I'll go a little bit over the knot so this way your knot is protected and uh, I'll leave just a little bit of space so every time I pop it the glass bead and the and the lead or tungsten especially if it's a tungsten it'll make a clicking sound and uh, that's the sound crayfish make when they're going through the rocks and what I do is I'll measure it. Once I measure it, I'll I'll put the hook through the plastic. And this is more of a feel thing. Once I feel that it's almost at the end, see there is no hook exposed at all, but it's just under the skin. So when a fish bites, the hook exposes. I don't know if you guys can see it, put it a little bit down. So that way it's a lot more weedless and the hook itself it's in the body. All it takes is just a little bit of pressure to expose the hook. And uh, I've been doing pretty good uh, this year on my tournaments with this type of setup. I've been using Christy Kraus and uh, Kraus baits. And uh, sometimes, most of the time, I send them depending on the bite. Um, if I'm missing, I don't have the most, I'm not the most skilled person, so um, I do like to cheat a little bit. So I'll use uh, heavy scent. That way, when the fish bites it and uh, they taste it, so they just swallow it. And that gives me enough time to set the hook. And especially when I'm using. Uh, uh, floral um, it's not I didn't have that uh, sensitivity of a braid or monotex monotex is just like braid but uh, it's a lot smoother I'm not quite sure how it's exactly done but uh, it's pretty 
it's a pretty high tech line but uh that's how i rig it guys uh let me know if you guys have any questions or how do you guys like to rig it and uh, which creature base do you guys like to use and uh, do you guys have any questions about uh, tungsten or uh, lead jack down in the comments and i'll catch you on the next one